Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to discuss in-memory datasets. Uh, as you uh, maybe remember from one of my previous videos, when working with datasets, uh, you usually work with some uh, database, uh, meaning that, uh, for example, a dataset can represent a database table, as for example here with Ada table, which uh, pretty much uh, represents data from a single database table. But uh, you can also use in-memory datasets, meaning uh, those datasets are not uh, linked to any database, uh, any file, and simply all data is in-memory and you can work, it, uh, work with it as uh, you would normally work with any dataset. You can uh, add new records, delete the existing ones, add the existing ones, uh, uh, create new and so on and so on and uh, well how it's done uh, there are two approaches uh, in uh, creating uh, in-memory data set uh, first one is by using a client data set component and the second one is uh, by using FireDuck uh, name table so I will focus mostly on uh, using client data set because uh, that component is available in all versions of C++ Builder, while uh, I, I don't know if uh, that applies uh, for a uh, FireDuck map table as well, because I remember uh, those components were restricted uh, by license. So I'm, I'm not really sure uh, if uh, everything is available, for example, in C++ Builder Community Edition, so you can check that out for yourself. But we'll show both uh, approaches today and uh, see the differences, which are really small. So let's uh, add a client data set. Uh, component and this now uh, component represents in memory data set and first thing we need to do is to define the structure of uh, each record so I can right click and say the fields editor and uh, I can add a new field for example uh, record number uh, which can be auto increment uh, I can add a bunch of uh, other fields for example uh, number uh, which uh, is integer, or I can add uh, uh, some uh, string. Uh, with strings, you always need to define the max size. Okay, and uh, well, let's say that this is uh, the structure of our data set. And uh, what you need to do now is to uh, use data source which will be linked to this uh, client data set as uh, you already know uh, data, sets, uh, data sources are connected to some data sets and in this case it's going to be in a memory uh, client data set right and uh, once we have that uh, we have the structure we need to create a data set you can do that programmatically by calling create data set methods on uh, this component here or simply by right clicking and say create data set okay and that automatically uh, activated the data set and now we can use for example a database grid here and assign that data source and as you can see now we have um, our data source our uh, in-memory data set available here in uh, DB grid So now let's see how this works. And as you can see, now we have an in-memory data set containing three columns. This is uh, auto increment, this is integer uh, column, and this is string column. So you cannot write anything to this uh, auto increment field. Uh, it will auto increment by itself, but uh, we can add something here or something here. And uh, as you can see, auto increment uh, automatically added a value here. Now I can also uh, add new record, etc. So what we have now is a set of data that is in memory. It is not linked to any database table and pretty much you can uh, edit your uh, data using uh, any uh, data aware uh, components like DB grid, uh, DB text, DB editor, anything like that. But uh, well, where is where this can be useful? Uh, well, it can be, for example, useful when working with uh, XML or JSON. For example, uh, instead of using uh, 
traditional approaches by using the code. You can also, um, for example, load entire XML or JSON files into uh, prepared in-memory data sets and simply work with that data using Dataware components. And uh, later on, for example, when clicking a button, you can uh, export that data back into those XML or JSON files. Uh, I believe it's simply easier to work with data when using uh, this data set approach than uh, by using uh, original uh, XML or JSON approach. Well, the same thing can be accomplished by using a file document table. So it is also one approach to creating memory data set. As I said, you need to check uh, uh, its availability uh, due to um, a license terms, right? Uh, I can also create a new field here, and uh, it's pretty much the same as in the case of uh, uh, client data set. So this can be integer field, and this can be uh, string field. Okay. And now I will activate that table and I'll redirect my data source from client dataset to main table. And now this DB grid is going to uh, work with data from the main table one. Now let's run the application. And uh, again, I can input here a number. And everything works. So again, we have in the memory data set which we can work with. Uh, well, for uh, for example, I will show you one other uh, small um, application. So this is uh, like a small math quiz, uh, maybe for I don't know for first graders uh, in, in math. And uh, well, let's run this. Okay. So what I uh, want here is to generate uh, a number of questions, for example, five questions. Uh, and when I click uh, the generate button, I have this is the first uh, record, second, third, fourth, fifth, and the first number is, uh, for example, one, operation is plus, and the second number is two, meaning I expect from, uh, for example, first grader to answer this question uh, by inputting the answer here. And then I'll go to the second question. How well, this is a negative result. Let's pretend we don't know the answer. Uh, then we go here. And let's uh, answer this incorrectly. And if we check the answers, we got correct three out of five uh, because we didn't answer this correctly and we didn't answer this correctly. But the point is that uh, we have generated a set of records, in this case, math questions, uh, which are entirely placed in memory. So there is no uh, background database uh, where, uh, with database table where those records are located, no file uh, or anything like that. You can simply edit these um, data uh, using dbware components and uh, uh, like I said uh, it can be uh, very useful when working with XML and JSON because we could for example add here uh, a button uh, meaning export to XML or export to JSON which would probably uh, speed things up when working with those uh, types of files. Well that's it about in-memory data sets. Uh, if you have any questions, like always, please, uh, feel free to write in the comments. Thank you and see you next time.